acid-base titration practical part one uh, welcome in this video I am going to discuss on how you can carry out a quantitative analysis otherwise known as a volumetric analysis in volumetric analysis or uh, volume measurement here today we are going to determine we are going to determine the accurate concentration of hydrochloric acid the accurate concentration the, the accurate concentration of hydrochloric acid uh, solution in this in this case we have a strong acid and uh, a strong base titration this is a strong acid a strong base a titration to determine the accurate concentration of hydrochloric acid now we have been given the analyte which is sodium hydroxide of non concentration 0.1 mole per dm cube this is the analyte this is the titran hydrochloric acid it has a concentration of 0 0.075 mole per dm cube and uh, 0 0.125 mole per dm cube we are not sure of the concentration that is why we are carrying out this uh, experiment to determine its accurate concentration when it fully reacts with sodium hydroxide. For this to be achieved, we need an indicator. Indicators are weak acids. We need an indicator. This indicator will enable us to arrive at our equivalent point or our at our end point. Now to have this done, you also need a pipette. We will need a pipette that we will pipette 25 uh, ml. It is designed in such a way that only the accurate 25 ml can enter there. So we will need 25 uh, ml of the analyte, which is the 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. Uh, sodium hydroxide. We will pipe it into our conical flask. We will pipe it into our conical flask. After that, we will use an indicator because indicators are weak acids that will help us get to our uh, end uh, uh, to our end point or to achieve the equivalent point. And lastly, we will have to fill our burette. Our burette with the uh, with the titran, which is the acid, taking a lot of precaution because acids are very, very corrosive. Now, in reading our results, you should know that the period is graduated in a such a way that from zero to 50 cm cube, in between, there is uh, a graduation of 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.1 cm cube uh, difference. So if the bottom of the miniscules sits on the point, let me say two, the answer should be, your reading should be 2.00 uh, cm cube. It is if the bottom of the miniscules uh, in the B red is between 2.1 and 2.2, your reading should be 2.15 cm cube. That is how the reading should be in two decimal places. Then, in recording your results, this is how results, this is how results are recorded. This is how the results are recorded. The results are recorded, the, uh, the period initial reading, the period initial reading, the period final reading, and uh, the titra, the titra is the difference between the initial period reading and the final period reading. Then the mean tetra is the two results, it could be two or three results that are almost similar, a difference of just 0 0.1 in them. That's how you can get your mean tetra. You add the results that are similar 
and divide by the to uh, by uh, by two or by three, you have your mean tetra, and that is the mean tetra that you will use in your calculations. Now, we have to move to the first step. As I told you, the first step in this procedure will be the first step in this procedure will be to to prepare the analyte into our conical flask. So we use 25 ml of the, the pipette and draw it. Okay, we need to bring it to the mark. This is the mark. This is the mark here. We need to bring it there. It must be at the mark. Okay, it is exactly 25 ml. We can now run it into, we now run it into our conical flask. Excellent. Now you are done with it. You are done. This is uh, the analyte. What we need to do is that make, remember not to push. You may find in here that there are some little drops of the analyte that is still left there. But the instrument is designed in such a way that that section has to contain that amount of analyte. So you should not, in any case, push force it out. To include it into the conical flask. As it remains like that, just allow it like that and continue with the next step. Our next step is we have to fill the burette with, we have to fill our burette. You can lower it down to the level that you can easily fill it. You lower it, then make sure you fill your burette ensuring that you have your safety because you are dealing with acids. Now, you have to do what? You have to fill the... You have to fill it... Okay. Now, how you fill it? Fill the acid, you have to remove the, the thinner. You rest, take it back. Then, make sure it is on zero, zero point mark. Okay, it is on the point. Now the acid is there. We are done with the acid. The next thing is, for us to attain the end point, we need a phenolphthalein indicator. You add about two to three uh, drops, I mean uh, three and uh, to four drops of the phenolphthalein indicator. Now, this is our, our, indica uh, our indicator that has been added. Now, we now have a pink color. We now have a pink color of the analyte. We can now titrate using the, we can now titrate uh, using the hydrochloric acid in the burette. What you do is, we have to do a rough titration. 
This is the wrong titration. Yeah, this is a rough titration. The rough titration enables you. The rough titration enables you to know the range where there is the end point, so that in the in, in, in the subsequent uh, experiment you will not have to go again to be running to determine where the end point is supposed to be. Here, our end point in this experiment is ten point uh, ten point. And 9.2. Our end point here is 9.2. We have to record it in our table as 9.2. As 9.2. Our initial period reading was 00. We have to record it as 0 0.00. Then our final volume now is 9.2. So it will be 9.20 cm cube. So our tetra now will become what? 9. 20 cm cube. That is the tetra for our rough, uh, for our rough titration. What we do now is we need to start the first titration. We now know the range of uh, of the value where uh, where we are supposed to have our endpoint. We can now go to the next uh, titration to have our accurate value. You could start it there, or you can still fill it to the point. You could start it from 9.20 and continue, or for easy reading, you can still refill the, uh, the, the blue red to 00, zero mark. For easy reading, I will advise my students to refill it back to 00, zero so that they won't, they won't have difficulty in reading the results. If we refill this to zero zero, now we have refilled it. We need to do our second titration. There's a second titration. We need a phenoptalin indicator of four drops. This is our phenoptalin indicator. You see it. Now we start our titration now. We are starting our titration now. Our rough value was 9.2. Let's see what we are going to have here. Let's see what we are going to have here. Now that we are approaching the, uh, the end point, you have to release the tab to be dropping wisely. Okay, that is the point. And now the value is what? Is 9. Instead of 9.2, our second value is 9. That is the 9 we have got. So initial reading was still 0, 0, now we are on 9. Nine point zero zero cm cube. We have to do this at the third one now. We have to do the third one for in order to have an accurate value of our mean titra. We need to do at least two experiments. We have done the first one, 
then we are going now to the second titration. So, go now to the second titration. We need to do it, rinse it with distilled water or deionized water. Now we need to pipe it again 25 ml. That's it. The next thing is we need an indicator. Three to four drops. Okay. Now, our value now is on 11. Our initial value is 11. 11. Our initial mirror reading is 11. So we can now titrate. experiment which is the rock titration then the first titration then the second titration it is advisable to carry at least other two uh, titrations to have values that are close to each other where you have values that are close to each other with a difference of 0 0.1 cm cube you use that one as your mean tetra that is how you can get the mean tetra and the mean tetra will be the volume of the the titrant that have been used in this reaction and we can use that to calculate the number we can use that to calculate we will use that to calculate the number of moles of the hydrochloric acid we will use the volume there to calculate the number of moles of the uh, of the hydrochloric acid that have reacted. Thank you. Again, this experiment can be carried out using bromophenol blue indicator. With bromophenol blue indicator, you can still use this very experiment to carry out because bromophenol blue indicator will be from blue to uh, yellow. 
It will be from blue to yellow, as you can see. This is the end point. This is the end point for using another indicator, bromophenol blue indicator. If we were to use bromophenol blue indicator, we will have the analyte when the bromophenol blue indicator is added to it, it will be blue. Now, after titrating with a with the titrant, the end point will be this. So this is uh, these are the color changes in case we use a bromophenol blue indicator. Meanwhile, the one we have just done. The one we have just done, we use hydrochloric acid and uh, sodium hydroxide. Using the um, uh, phenolphthalein indicator, this is the initial color. After adding phenolphthalein indicator, this is the color of the analyte. Then after titrating, uh, titrating it with the uh, titron, hydrochloric acid, this will be the end point. And this is how the results are being achieved. When you do this, when you have this, you use your results. These results can be used to calculate the moles of the hydrochloric acid. Having got the result, the, the mean tetra of this experiment, we will use this mean tetra to calculate the moles of hydrochloric acid. And the first thing you do is by writing a balanced equation to know the number of uh, the, the number uh, the number of um, uh, the hydrogen ions uh, the acid that have reacted with the OH ions. By doing like that, you can now balance the equation. Use that equation to calculate the number of moles of the acid. And by using the number of moles of the acid, you can use the relation which is concentration which is equal to moles all over volume in DMQ. And you now use that to calculate your concentration. That is it. Continue to watch our videos, share, make comments, and uh, subsequently, we are, going be, we are going to be giving you more of the videos. Thank you very much.